I was in the shower, and this dude come in, he said, Hey, mama. I said, say, man, you must have me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> he said, yeah. <laughs> sure do. But not for long. <laughs> well, there was, a, you know, a mop bucket there. And I said, look, man, you know, you better leave me alone. I was scared to death, you know. So I eased back, and I got this mop bringer, you know. So I said, bam, I hit the dude in the head, and he fell on the floor. And he said, man, I was just joking. I said, motherfucker, bam. I found out right then that no matter how young and skinny or pretty you are, you got the strength in your two arms to kill a motherfucker if they fuck with you. And ain't no one ever fucked with me since. I want fresh teardrops from a new bone child in a cup made in Timbuktu. You can't get that try us stew. Whole cat smothered with catfish brew. I'll take the ears from a rat tail monkey and I'll mix with a spider's left eye. To make me a salad of jungle roots from Africa And I'll be ready to die Oh, water Now you know just how I feel I'll be ready to die now Cause as soon as I eat my last meal About two years ago, uh, we had captive music going pretty strong, and uh, people were just sort of using my name. And they, uh, <clears throat> a couple inmates in there sent some songs to me. And they were uh, sent back to them and said we couldn't use the songs or something like that. And I guess they wrote a letter to the warden and said that uh, if I ever came back, you know, they were going to kill me. So they barred me from there for, and I was surprised when. Uh, I found out that we were going to go to the day to do a show. But we're doing a concert here at Tennessee State Prison. I see what the head count is here. Ten, count me. Ten. all your state furniture in the place. And that's the school right there. Show y'all how someone like you gets to where I'm at today, being someone like me, because I used to be someone like you. And it started when I was 15 years old at the Boys Industrial School in Lancaster, Ohio. And I started singing with just my guitar and five of my friends, because that's the only instruments that we have. And I'm going to get some people that are close to y'all out here with me now and we're going to sort of recreate that moment for you to sort of take you back and let you know what it was like to me the sons of thunder is coming right now yeah come on and then we used to do things like this, you know. I used to stand around and them brothers used to say, man, you got to learn how to sing some of these gospel songs. And I used to tell them, yeah, I want to learn how to sing them songs. And we used to get down and we'd get down by the corner of the yard out there by them old bleachers. And we'd stand out there and we'd say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Sometimes oh, when we 
were standing out there on the yard. And every now and then we had an old guy that called the Reverend. And the Reverend used to come by and he said, I know you have time for I love Lucy. Yeah. And you have time for half gun will travel. But do you have time for Jesus? And I used to look at him in the eye and I said, I ain't never knew nothing about no Jesus. And I ain't never knew nothing about no Billy Graham. But I shall know how to rob a bank. And I shall know how to crack a safe. And I shall know how to pimp or die. And he used to say to me, he used to say to me, he said, son, you better get down on your knees and say, thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you Lord. You brought me here. She brought me from the position like I'm in a position to talk about something then I go out there and saying well the food's bad and uh, you know then I'm just another jerk to them but if I can go out there and, and tell them you know what I think that I think that they need more psychologists that you can't have 5,000 men and one psychologist or one psychiatrist in an institution and to handle all these men's cases because the only time you see him is when you when you cause a problem so he can't help you and uh, when Luttra was had his prison here and I came out here and, uh, and he asked me about this place here, and I said, well, I said, I think your biggest problem is that when you shut Brushy Mountain down, you overcrowded your prison here, and I think that you have to get something to take the place of Brushy Mountain if you can't open that back up, but you have to have a, uh, a separate place, you know, for uh, old-timers, because old-timers don't like to be around no young you time, you know. I mean, they, they, motherfuckers in here trying to pull time, that's what they're, you know. I just got my daddy out of prison. I, I, I don't know whether y'all, last time I was here, we was talking about that, and he was... Oh, life, yeah. He, he did a life sentence, and uh, and me and my youngest brother just got, he's been out one year, and he came home for Christmas in his first airplane. We met him at the airport, and, and he was he was scared to death, you know. He, and he, just, he was just biting his nails and shit. But, but, I, but I wasn't a criminal when I first went to the boys' industrial school in Lancaster because my parents didn't want me, you know. So they went down and said, well, we don't want him. Uh, you got to do something with him. Well, they couldn't put me in a children's home because I had parents, so they put me in Star Commonwealth for boys in Albion, Michigan. I was there for two weeks, ran away with two older boys that stole a car. We sat on each other's laps, and one worked the pedal and one steered. <laughs> <laughs> got home, and my parents called up and turned us in. You know, I got a big greyhound bus out here, and there ain't nothing out there but Cadillacs. These guards all drive Cadillacs. And that's the truth. No, it really is. It's the truth. Now, they told me that you all had a lot of drugs in here. So now, if they're driving Cadillacs and you got drugs in here, then there must be a connection. So I decided that I would call the FBI up and tell them that there was drugs in the joint and Cadillacs in the parking lot. And I figured that the drugs in you ought to be in the parking lot and the Cadillacs in them ought to be in here. Well, you know, I started sniffing this typewriter fluid. You know, you know how you sniff typewriter fluid, you know, on the rag and everything. And we got really, you know, pretty wasted. Well, they got a truck that comes in and brings guards uniforms to the laundry, you know, and they, and they wash the guards clothes. So this guy came in with the truck and he parked it and got out. And I said, hey, man. I've only been there about three weeks, you know. I said, man, the guy, the, the truck's still running. The guy said, yeah, man. So I said, man, shit, let's get out of here. You know, let's take that truck and go on. You ain't nothing but an old fence. So we jumped in this truck, zoom, across the yard, 55 miles an hour, boom, right into the gate. Nothing happened. Nothing happened, man. It didn't even move, you know. So we jumped out the truck, and we got these little knives that we made, and we're saying, motherfucker, open the gate. He's standing there with a machine gun saying, and laughing. Man, are you guys crazy? Man, you better open this gate with a little old knife, man. This guy's got a gun. So they took me to the hole, kicked my ass, you know, and transferred me to Lewisburg Penitentiary. Well, I got up there and I decided, yeah, man, I'm going to be cool, you know, I'm not going to do nothing wrong. I was walking in the dining hall and I was only 18 years old at the time, you know. I was having a little spit curls in my hair, you know. Man, you know how you went, you walk in the dining hall, it's just, you know, everything's going on. Man, I walked in the dining hall, I heard all that shit, I got up to the door and I walked in and all of a sudden it was, Total silence. I looked around, everybody was looking at me. You know? They was looking at me like I was Marilyn Monroe. You know? So by the time I get to the table, they got this seat, you know, they seat six people at the table. Well, all the table is full over here and the guards stand here. Some guy gets up and starts talking to the guard. Hey, by the time I get to the table, there's three dudes sitting there and another dude holding my chair for me. 
you know. So I sit down and put my tray down here, you know. And they started firing them quick. Where you from? What you doing? What you in here for? Where you going? How, uh, blah, blah, blah. Firing them questions. Do you want any cigarettes? You need any? I said, whoa, wait a minute, man. Shit, wait a minute, man. You know. I stayed in my cell. You know, I, I was in. You didn't have to go nowhere. I didn't go nowhere. I stayed in my cell for three weeks. Didn't eat. Didn't go to supper. Nothing. I was scared. You know, I was 18 years old. Scared. So they come by and they, they had a pass. They took me up to the warden's office and he says, "What's wrong with you, boy?" I said, there ain't anything wrong with me, Captain. I just, I just don't want to go out there with all them animals, you know. And they said, ah, oh, them boys ain't going to hurt you. I said, okay, man. So they put me out there in the population, you know. Well, and the first day I was there, there was two dudes standing over here washing their clothes in the mop, in the mop bucket, you know. And this other dude came up and said, say, man, you got my bucket. Dude said, man, it's a state bucket. He said, man, that's my bucket, man. Give me my bucket. Man, get out of here, motherfucker. I'm washing my Man, give me that bucket. The dude stabbed the dude to death right there in front of me, man, over a state mop bucket, right? They carried it, you do that. I said, oh, man, shit, I'm not staying here, you know. <laughs> Two days later, I'm running across the yard, man. You know, I'm out there and everybody's playing football. And all of a sudden, some dude just runs right by me. Shoop. Another dude falls down. Shoop. I look down and this dude's running with a baseball. bat. he knocked this dude's head off. Wow. I wrote a letter to my mother. I said, dear mom. <laughs> Man, you got to get me out of here. I ain't never did nothing wrong in my life. And, you know, whatever it is that, that they got me in here for, I ain't never going to do it again. 